Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm Eliza Williams. This is Adam Smith. And uh, we're here today to talk about your work. But as a little intro, um, you probably will have come across Adam's work in lots of different places. He's directed Doctor Who, period dramas like uh, Little Dorrit, uh, music videos for the streets, and last year, of course, uh, the feature film Trespass Against Us, which starred Michael Fassbender. So there's loads of stuff, but we're not going to talk about any of that. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, sort of 20, 25 years worth of work that you've done for the Chemical Brothers which sort of began in quite a humble way, but has kind of actually been quite significant in terms of culture and in terms of uh, changing co concert visuals, particularly, I'd say, for in terms of what people expect and what people want. It's been a hugely influential body of work, which you're still working on now, I believe, this morning. Even. Yeah, we, <laughs> excuse me. I've been shouting yesterday because we've been filming the last two days for the new show, so... Yeah. Yeah working so, with some amazing dancers and I've kind of learned over the years that actually dancers like a lot of encouragement when they're, really? when they're there, yeah. Sort of watching other choreographers and realizing that you shout a lot is a good thing. So excuse my hoarseness of throat. Interesting. Um, well, should we, I mean, should we show a clip to begin with to set yeah, the scene? Yeah. And then maybe we, we the can the have screen? a chat. Can anyone You've got to press yeah. the button. I oh, I've got, yeah. Moment. The images? Yeah, there was this friend of ours who did a company there was Vegetable Vision <coughs> and they travel with us and do all our gigs and oh, yeah. they make their own films and stuff. And it's cool, you know, because we trust them implicitly on, like, the visual side of things and they come up with these mad, you know, weird stuff going on and it's like, it's really good. Where do you get the ideas for, for the visuals and stuff? Yeah, this is when somewhere you're around there. And audio and the visual coming together, you know, that's what we've always wanted to do to make this intense sensory overload. When we play live, you know, the visual element that we've always been really important. I started working with the Chemical Brothers when they were actually called the Dust Brothers. We met at a club that Andy Weatherall used to do called Sabre Sonic, and they needed some visuals. You know, he's still, we still work with him, he does all the visuals when we play live, you know, first met about 15 years ago. I don't know if anyone could see that, it's not very good <laughs> quality. That was a little overview, I guess, going back to the start. I mean, yeah. maybe we should start with how, how did it all begin? How did you first meet? Uh, we were, some friends and I were part of this sort of collective called, uh, we didn't call it a collective at the time, but we called ourselves Vegetable Vision. And we were making visuals for clubs and raves. And um, yeah, we, uh, our, first, our first gig was for a guy called Sam, who was part of the Mutoid Waste Company. I don't know if anyone's heard of the Mutoid Waste Company, but Sam had, uh, had one eye and okay. one glass eye. And he used to make these incredible UV sculptures. So we went to his warehouse where he was squatting in Camberwell and had this meeting with this guy with, with one eye that emerged from the shadows with this UV glass eye kind of. And he gave us 50 quid right. and a roll of 16 mil film and put our name on the flyer, and that was our first. And when's this, sort of mid-90s or something? No, it was actually, that was late 80s, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. and, uh, and that was, yeah, and that was the beginning. And then we, we met, so that was our first, sort of, uh, our first show, and uh, we were using slide projectors and film projectors that were kind of borrowed and, and uh, well, borrowed perhaps in inverted commas um, from the college that I was at at the time and the guy I was working <laughs> with from his college and his raiding his dad's slide collection. And, uh, so and what was the scene like at the time? Was there, I mean, were there a lot of visual, club visuals going on at this point? There wasn't, there wasn't a great deal, which is why we were quite... Which, in a way, was really good, because you'd be in somewhere like this with just a couple of strobe lights and people going mad, and that yeah. had a had a certain vibe, but then we, we started seeing other club visuals that were, there was a lot of kind of fractals around there that were really, I mean, we just found them really ugly and we just thought we, we were 
interested in filmmakers like Oscar Fischinger and Len Lai and Man Ray's sort of experimental films and these kind of abstract stuff that was shot on film. And, and so we, we started experimenting with that sort of stuff. Um, and I think we were doing that before we decided that we would do visuals. We just were playing with, with different kind of filming techniques that, you know, really stuff that we could afford at the time, mm. you know. So we'd get, we'd go to the labs and we'd beg them to give us their off cuts of film and then we'd scratch on the, on the film or we'd paint on the film and, and we'd put them as loops on these uh, um, uh, film projectors and, and get these kind of interesting abstracted shapes that, because it was on a loop, would, would go with music and work yeah. really well. Um, yeah, so, so it was quite different what we were doing to what a lot of other... And a lot of other people were just showing the visuals was... Their idea of visuals was to put, um, you know, the, the, that sequence, the Starfield sequence from 2001 on. Right, OK. You know? Yeah, yeah. And we wanted to try and Do make our own stuff, you know. Yeah. And what was the response from the DJs and musicians? I mean, were they all into it at that time? Yeah, we used to get... Uh, one of our early employees was this uh, gangster who used to just pay us in a bag of, bag of pills. He'd just give us all these E's, and that was our... Not the greatest... You know, highly young, professional, yeah, though. <laughs> not the greatest gift to young men, but at the time, we, we thought that was a very clever idea. Yeah. The reality was, if we'd got caught with them, we'd have, you know, probably been, have been in prison end. for quite yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but... Um, but yeah, so there was lots of really uh, interesting characters and, and amazing people that we met from all sorts of different kind of... That was a great thing about that period of time, was mm. that the whole kind of rave culture brought together, you know, gangsters and the aristocracy and kind of... and everything in between, you know. And, yeah. And um, football hooligans were suddenly hugging each other and all those sort yeah, of acid yeah. house clichés. Um, were, you know, really were happening, and we all kind of thought, partly because we were all, you know, fueled by <laughs> these yeah. appeals that this gangster was giving us, um, <laughs> we thought that we were changing the world, and this was going to be, you know, yeah. everything was going to be different, and everyone was coming together, and it was it was wonderful. Um, actually, we're just, you know, staying out all night and partying, just like most generations. You know, yeah, have but there done. was something going yeah. on in terms of the kind of... Yeah, there was a creativity. You know, there was, there I mean, genuinely was exact, a yeah, thing there. Was, there it's were it's people awesome. making things just because you wanted to, you know, sort of... People ask me now, oh, what, you know, what did you want to do? And it was like, we just wanted to make things, because that... And, and I think it's really key to, to keep remembering, you know, a week or two ago, I was in a real um, panic about this shoot that was happening and getting, you know, really stressed out. And then it's like, hang on you're doing exactly what you love doing, you know? And I think yeah. that's really important to always remember. But yeah, there were, you know, there were people through that kind of scene, the sort of clubs that we were doing visuals at. We met Ed and Tom, uh, who were then called the Dust Brothers. Mm. And, um, and they were, you know, they were making this music that sort of uh, had taken on sort of dance music in a bit of a different direction that was really exciting and and uh and they were yeah they were and again they were making songs because they were making records because they loved doing that that's what you know that's what they were doing it it wasn't with a some great master plan yeah and they definitely part of their plan wasn't to you know it wasn't to go on tour and you know as they used to say you know we're backroom boys we're not you know we're not front men and in fact when someone suggested they did a live show there was a lot of resistance in that, you know, 20 odd years ago to an electronic act doing a live show. There was a lot of um, ill feeling around sort of so-called real musicians. Yeah. That were like, how dare these, you know. And they were in fact kind of pioneers in a way of, of making that change. I think they were, yeah. I didn't yeah. really know it at the time. And, and so, but because of that, they were like, oh, we need some visuals, you know, come and do some visuals, you know, and so, so we did, you know, the first show was like 20 minutes long and we had these slide projectors um, and in front of the slide projectors we had these wheels that rotated round that were controlled by a Hornby um, train set voltage controller so you could change the speed to the BPM, you know, so it was all a bit... So Keith you were Robinson there doing and this? Homemade, yeah. We yeah, were up yeah. a scaffold tower that was wobbling around and, you know, 
changing loops with loops around our necks. And yeah. in those days, we also used to have this overhead projector, which I don't know if anyone remembers overhead projectors, but they're kind of a 70s um, school, you know, before the days of this sort of stuff, where um, teachers could write on them. But we used to use, and then the words would come up projected. But we used to use them with oils. Um, and kind of uh, these glass plates with oils inside. So we'd have that going on. You'd actually on. be doing that? Yeah, you? yeah. Wow, OK. That wasn't actually fun. for the chemical show, but for other club shows. Yeah, yeah. And then you'd, you'd do it with red ink, and it would be kind of really looking good. And you, then you'd go to the toilet, and people would be really looking at you, and like, what the fuck's everyone looking at me for? Like, <laughs> and then you'd look in the mirror and realise you had red ink all down your face. Ah, OK, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, so at this point, it, it doesn't sound like it was more about the effects rather than there being a kind of narrative. So, because your later sort of visuals for the Chemical Brothers, especially, I think, have a sort of stories that start to come through. I mean, it, yeah, that's that something quite... that's that's something that's evolved um, over the years, <coughs> and it's been amazing that we've been um, supported by Ed and Tom have given us this trust and this belief to do these these visuals and and. And the, what we found was there's a lot of samples in the Chemical Brothers music. So we started bringing these characters to life, the, the, the lip sync samples that happen. And, um, and that seemed to really connect with an audience. There, were, uh, there, was, um, there was one sample that goes, you are all my children now. Um, so I got my dad painted up as a clown and he says that to the, to the audience. And um, for some <laughs> reason that connects, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's evolved. And, and you know, in the Chemical Brothers music, the live set, to me, has a kind of emotional journey that it takes you on. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and it's our, you know, we're in the, ser the visuals are in the service of extenuating that journey. And so I treat that as a script. And the more I got into doing uh, drama and stuff, the more I would feed in what I'd learned from drama to, mm. to the visuals, you know, and, and make it rather than it just be abstract shapes that moved in time with the visuals. It's like, well, let's put a human in there. So let's have, <coughs> um, you know, let's make a dancer into an abstract shape so that it's got a humanity to it. So yeah. again, it's that kind of emotional connection is what it's all about to me. Yeah, yeah. Are and we has... talking about creativity? Are we, we've gone well off brief, haven't we? I think we're talking... Have we? All right. <laughs> There's no one checking at the back from DNA D, is there? Oh, I see to the DNA no, debrief. I, I mean, I think, well, I think we're all right, aren't we? So I think we're fine. Um, but in terms of your relationship with them, like, presumably at the start it was fairly uh, relaxed and fairly sort of let's see what happens. Um, I mean, how much has that has, has stayed like that or has it become a sort of more professional well, it kind of used series? To be, yeah, it used to be they were, they'd kind of get what they were given in a way. And... Um, but as it's evolved, they've kind of... It's, what's amazing is they've given us this creative freedom. You know, they'll give us the music. As I work... I now work... For the last sort of, 10 years or so, I work with Marcus Lyle. Mm. We co-direct the show and we, we design the show. And <coughs> excuse me. Um, but it's, it's amazing that we kind of present these ideas that... Um, you know, I don't think you'd necessarily get them commissioned or get them away with a with a with a, a brand or an agent mm. necessarily. You know, you kind of go, oh yeah, there's going to be a clown, um, and then there's going to be a teapot that's full of milk that explodes in slow motion, and then <coughs> you'd be kind of going, would you commission that? I'm not sure you would, but they they just go, yeah, that sounds great. You know, and so it's actually they, still them that say, yeah, they, go for that's it. Good. You know, or yeah. push it more, push that idea more, make it make it weirder. You know, and yeah. <coughs> And that's such a such a gift in the in the kind of filmmaking. You know, filmmaking's quite expensive. You know, the shoot that we've done the last two days. We had a big, big lighting set up. We had an amazing cast of dancers. You know, it's a it's a quite a big production. And um, and so it's a they're they're investing their money into. Yeah, they see the importance. They could pocket, they could trouser all that money and still go on tour. Yeah. And and get. You know, and people, but they want to give people a show. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and yeah, and, and also when they do have a, you know, sometimes we've made pieces, <coughs> like last time we made a, for the song Star Guitar, we, we got all these faces to sing one bit of the lyrics. Mm. And then um, 
we were going to do a kind of Godly and Cream rip-off, you know, that video for uh, where it's all, all the faces morph into one another. And, and we did it, and Tom and Ed saw it, and, and Tom just was like, yeah, it's just robbing the audience of that moment and telling them what to think at that okay. moment when they should be allowed. And he was right. Do you know, you know so it's, it's so like, it it's lovely. You get it's like yeah, yeah. the best forms of collaboration when, I, <coughs> when I've made the sort of few commercials that I've made is that when, you, when you're working with a, you know, a great creative team, there's a trust and there's a belief and there's a... But then when you get notes, you get really, really good... Yeah, they're not just you know, saying do whatever you yeah, like. Yeah, they're not yeah. saying do, you know, but they're also not micromanaging, do you know yeah. what I mean? They're, they're just drawing, you know, that's what I try and take into my, you know, if you've cast the right person in, in whatever role, whether that's production designer, or wardrobe, or, 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 or a dancer, or an actor, yeah. if you want to just draw, you want to just create an environment where you're drawing the best out of them, you know, and, and, and that's been my experience with commercials when it's really worked is when creative directors are just, then they come in and they go, oh yeah, see it again, see it again. Okay, what about that and that? And you're like, wow, let's try it, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, really, yeah. And then it's better and it's, it's like, a proper collaboration. yeah, I like, I like um, I'm not one of those people that doesn't like notes, but I don't like, I don't think anyone does create, being micromanaged, you know? Yeah. So, but this is kind of the, the polar opposite of that. Um, to the point of when we were making the film, don't think. Um, yeah, explain a bit about that because we haven't well, talked yeah, about that. We, but, we, yeah, um, we'd never filmed the show and uh, we uh, decided to at this festival uh, in Japan, Fuji Festival, and, uh, which is this amazing, it's like Japanese Glastonbury, except it's really tidy, like really, really. And there's this beautiful moment, which I, at dawn, after filming all night, at dawn I went, I was walking back to the hotel and there's all these people washing their wellies by the stream, <laughs> washing their wellies, and that was a ritual every night. So I, I went and washed my wellies as well. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of it was the same sensation of, you know, when you're a kid and you first have your first pair of wellies and you don't know how they're working because you sort of feel, your feet feel wet, but they're not, do you know what I mean? It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. I wasn't on drugs. So that was <laughs> enough. Like, it was, um, but, um, it's a big moment. Yeah, it was a big moment. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, the... Yeah, so you so, made a film, so but it wasn't a, it wasn't a straight kind of concert film in the sense that you didn't just film the concert because you added sort of elements to make it work as a, a, a movie really rather than just a recording. Yeah, we, try, right? yeah, we yeah. tried to. We tried to to kind of again it was sort of bringing in my experience of drama and going how do you get an emotional connection with an audience? So I find sometimes the kind of the more generic. Um, BBC footage of glass, you know, they do it really nicely, but it doesn't really take you there. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, how do we take people there? <coughs> Excuse me. So, and the answer seemed to be, let's see it through someone's perspective. So let's see an audience member and then see what they're seeing and then see how that affects them. Mm. And then as you're watching that, that's how, you know, that's how a drama works, isn't it? That's kind of how you get, so we filmed all these people that were watching the show. And because it was in Japan, everyone was incredibly um, generous with their um, letting us film them. You know, we just had these notices on the cameras that said, please don't look in the lens, uh, just okay. ignore us, you know, tell us to go away if you don't want us to do this, you know, and, and we found these characters, or the, the five people that were filming on the 5Ds for us, found these characters in the audience that, um, that we, it just brings it a lot. You see there, and it was really moving for us, because we're normally watching the show from the mixing desk and analysing what the lights are doing and what the visuals are, and actually to see the reaction that it has on these mm. on the audience was just beautiful. You know, it's like, wow, it's, this is really moving people, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we, we used loads of that stuff, and then we saw through, rather than, you know, doing some big crane shot that whizzes over people's heads, that's not the way I've ever seen a, a gig, you know what I mean? I've no. been on a helicopter kind of spinning <laughs> over an audience. You know, yeah. I see a gig, and I see a head in front of me, and I see through, a ha through hands, and I see, you know, and so that kind of more visceral experience. Yeah. 
Um, it made it a totally different experience of a concert film, or, or as you, maybe not a concert film, but say watching Glastonbury on TV or something. It felt a much more uh, like a, you were in a journey with the with the music oh. and with the audience and. And it sort of went a bit weird at times. And I, yeah, know, we had a couple of plants as well. One yeah. of the, it's actually one of the editor's girlfriends. It's this amazingly striking um, the editors we work with. One of the editors we work with a lot, his girlfriend, Mario, is a very striking Japanese girl who's also a massive Chemical Brothers fan. And she'd never done any acting, but I was like, OK, we're going to film you in the show, and then we're going to film you round the festival. Because okay. I wanted to see the festival as well because Fuji Festival if you ever get a chance is an amazing festival to go to it's a really it's really beautiful and there's and visually it's kind of really interesting so we then did one sequence where she's kind of um, you see her and she sort of closes her eyes and it's like it's her memory of the festival the night before so you know that again when you're at a concert sometimes what I do if like sometimes you just close your eyes mm. and the music takes you somewhere else you know so we were trying to imagine what that would be and so we shot a load of her stuff um, around the festival and it was a bit scary at first because she was very self-conscious okay and I was like fuck this isn't gonna work this isn't gonna work so so I bought her three tequilas and <laughs> She was very good after that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Responsible director. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. And have you ever, you were saying earlier about the thing of watching the crowd respond. I mean, have you ever felt a sort of sense that you could, that you can kind of be a bit of a puppet master for people's emotions or that you could freak people out if you, with the imagery you use? Or yeah, I mean, I think, make them feel I amazing? think it's, um, hopefully it's not as kind of, um, Megalomatic as that, yeah, that is that a right like word? But you yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's more of a like, it's going from the emotion of the music of like, you know, there's a new sample in one of the new songs where it's like, he says, I'm mad as hell, I ain't gonna take it no more. And, and we've kind of come up with, I've got some images I think to show of okay. stuff, um, uh, of inspirations for the next, the, of the stuff that we shot yesterday. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, yeah, what you're saying, we sort of come up with these ideas and then people go, oh, is that, go, God, that's going to really freak people out. And it's like, oh, yeah, it probably will do. But it's kind of, it's just... It's part of the thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's sort of... It's not necessarily a conscious decision to freak people out. It's like, who is that character? He sounds pretty angry. He sounds quite scary. Yeah, let's bring him... Where, who is he? Yeah, let's yeah. find him, you know. Yeah. Um, should we? I don't yeah, yeah, know let's what, I, don't, well, I don't know what's next. Try the green button again, I reckon. Try the green button. Oh, this is galvanised. <laughs> There's one piece that we've done with an amazing dancer called Akram Khan. It's a reinvention of the song Galvanised. He is kind of fighting against this imaginary wall. We've made a wall out of these sharpie lights. So it's just beams of light are his kind of cage. And eventually, he knocks this cage down. We worked in a motion capture studio, and then we took that footage and we manipulated it and worked with a 3D company to make him into this kind of abstracted figure. Yeah, so that, that's something we really, that's evolved over the, over the years. And, and again, the, the, the fact that they've grown mm. in terms of how the stages that they're playing, we've, we've been able to, have well we've needed to have bigger screens and more powerful screens and um, <clears throat> I'm really interested in that interplay between visuals and lights yeah. and so uh, so that's the first time we sort of did it with a figure and this time on this show for this year we've we've pushed that even more we've done whole routines where you know there's like a the thing we shot yes uh, on Tuesday, you know, this dancers kind of going on this bit, new bit of music, kind of bing, 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 and each time they do that, a light is going to fire out to the audience okay. from behind the screen because it's a, it's not like this screen, it's a, it's a step, what's called a stealth screen, so you can put lights behind and shine it through, okay. and then they've got this move that goes, and and at that point the beam will go down, and it's just, yeah, playing with that 
three-dimensionalizing yeah. the show and taking it from the screen and involving the audience, you know. Yeah, yeah. And do you, I mean, and when you look back at it all, do you feel, because it seems to me that it, the Chemical Brothers especially really did influence, like, where a lot, I mean, now the expectation with almost, you know, with rock bands as well, like, there is an expectation to have incredible set design and visuals, but especially el electronic music because there's, you know, it's still that DJ thing but do you I mean is, do you feel that they and you recognize what the kind of effect you've had I mean do you reflect I don't, on it I don't know I don't know if it's um, I guess it yeah I guess it probably did certainly um, when I if you do start reflecting on it then yeah maybe it did have an influence and um, but I'm not sure if that's a healthy reflection or a sort of narcissistic. I swear, well, maybe it's you know more for I mean? me to do the but, EOS, but, but yeah. But, it, but it's, um, but yeah, it's 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 great to have, you know. Um, it's just opened out this bigger creative yeah, form, I think. Yeah, now, you know, I there's, hope now there's so, yeah. like, like artists and designers who are all working on those yeah. areas. And I mean, I think it's a lot of people. You know, I think Orbital were were doing yeah. great stuff. Uh, the Orb um, yeah. before then. Um, you know, Underworld and their collaboration with Tomato. So, you know, it was part of a time. thing, you know, yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. it certainly wasn't um, just us doing it. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, because we went to, <clears throat> we did a show, Big Bear Mountain in the sort of mid nineties. And it was the Orb, Underworld, Orbital, Chemical Brothers, it was just when Train Spotting had come out, so right. Born Slip, you know, it was really yeah, the sort a big of moment. Yeah, yeah. that time. And um, and all the promoters who, were, who, all the people that are now big DJs and promoters in the EDM scene were all at that gig. And that was a sort of moment that changed America's okay. It's kind just like of, the Sex Pistons yeah. gig for the well, I, I don't <laughs> know, but yeah, it sort of changed their, <laughs> yeah, yeah. their perception of things, even though, you know, dance cult we were just as usual England was reinventing an American thing and selling it back to them but yeah. um, but the but what that spawned is for me is really an ugly thing do you know what I mean EDM is is nothing right. like what the whole brave you know it's, yeah, it's yeah. a bit sort of you know muscly jocks and uh, and girls yeah. in their underwear and kind of and it seems a, and it's a bit it hasn't got any depth to it or any um heart maybe yeah any heart or soul you know and and the rigs that the festivals that they do are these monst visual monstrosities where they're just throwing money at it you know more and more lights bigger bigger screens yeah but the stuff on the screen hasn't been thought about or hasn't been considered it's just it's just kind of excessive and and um bloated do you know what i mean okay. um and i find the music you know I, so I don't want to go on a negative EDM. Rant, no, it's interesting because I, I think of things, you know, the more experimental stuff that you see coming out of. I mean, big artists like I don't know Rihanna and Beyonce and all these. Yeah, you know, those huge, shows are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Those I mean, shows, really big yeah. events. Yeah. You know? uh, but but yeah, to your point, I guess there's another line which goes in a, a less creatively which, yeah. interesting direction. I mean, people like, um, which I'm sure we've had nothing to do, you know, but it would definitely have no, nothing to do with influencing. But I love you know, the work of, you know, the fact that, show, as you say, shows have become, you know, as Devlin's work. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, just yeah. like, it's amazing, you know, it's yeah. phenomenal and really bold and conceptual. Yeah. And, and It's uh, sort of theatre within yeah, that context of yeah, music. It's yeah. brilliant. You know, her kind of cube thing for Kanye and Jay-Z was exactly. yeah. just brilliant, you know. And the fact that people want a kind of... Uh, what would have been a kind of niche art house sensibility that that's become more populist is a yeah. great is a great thing. Yes, no, I think so, and I think this the expectation from the audience now. I mean, maybe it's partly to do with how money's made in the music industry now because a lot of it is through yeah. live shows, so they'll be more sort of invested in that. But but I think you then you know also people want experiences now, and you kind of go to these gigs, and you really have a full. It's not just about hearing your favourite artists anymore. It's about seeing this kind experience, of whole, you yeah. know, which yeah. I feel like it's, you know, some of it stems from that period that, I mean, it's expanded out, but it... Yeah, and also it goes back to, yeah, the kind of when, when light shows were really kind of began in a way in the 60s with music and Grateful yeah. Dead and Pink Floyd here and... Yeah, it's got longer would roots. Show, you know, yeah. And then it kind of went off a bit into the 70s, yeah. 
Yeah. Probably died in the 80s a little bit and then, yeah, revived in the 90s. Poor old 80s. Poor, yeah. Everything died a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we can open up for questions in a minute, but I just one last thing I wanted to think, just sort of thinking back, because you were presumably quite young when you first started doing this. I was a teenager, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you feel now like it would still be a good route for if you were like a young filmmaker? Because um, obviously now you've got like, cheaper equipment, easier equipment, but do you think it's still a good avenue for, for kids to get into filmmaking and do, you know, the, working with musicians like this? I think it's wonderful, yeah. I think it's brilliant. To, it, it's, a, it's a really... It's great to be to have, you know, to see your work as part of this, you know, part of this experience, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, and it's a really nice place to play, you know, and where quite simple things can become really effective, mm. which may be in a music video, you know, and you can keep something going for a while because it's not the, the, the chief focus of everything, whereas in a music video, yeah. you kind of probably have to cut after a couple of shots. In this, you can go, okay, no, this is, that stays on, because it needs to be, yeah, I think it's... Yeah, yeah and you get that live reaction too, yeah, so that must a, be amazing. It's, it's a beautiful buzz to be part of that, you know, when you kind of see the show, the new show for the first time with an audience and, and you know, and it's a bit sad that we all, you know, have our, are so um, enmeshed with our phones and we all bring mm. our phones out. But at the same time, from a kind of, um, you know, show perspective of looking at what works, when you see, when all the, all the phones go up, you're like, oh, we've got a, good, we got a moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know you've got a yeah. reaction, yeah. We've well, I was been reading that there are now shows where people hand in their phones, right? Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's yeah. good. And, and actually, Tom, everything that I've, you know, I've sort of pitched ideas to Tom and Ed about when we've been approached by technology companies to say, oh, you know, you could have, you know, everyone could hold their phones up and have the visual that's on the screen on the phone or they could all have red, you know, a bit like Coldplay's wristband thing. And, yeah. and Tom's like, I don't want people to have their phone. I don't want to encourage people to be yeah. fucking about with their phone. I guess it takes them out of yeah, the moment. it's out moment. of the moment. You yeah. know, it's like, are you here right now? Are you taking a picture to show your mates where you are? Do you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah. Um, it's difficult, though, because I think we all sort of want to record. Yeah, it's, it's like, I'm having a great time. I've got to somehow yeah. have a record of it. So. Actually, if you're having a great time, you don't really need a record, yeah. do you? Yeah, yeah. You know. It's tricky, but, though. Yeah, it is tricky. Should we ask some questions? Yeah. Looking out. Hello. Have, any more stuff to show? have I got any more stuff to show? Let's have a look. I'm not sure. Oh, this is a trailer. This is the trailer for, for Don't Think, the film we made. This is Mario. Three tequilas in. <laughs> so we took some of the props that we'd used in the show and, and put them in the, yeah, at the festival and also projected some of the images from the visuals around the festival so it all tied the whole thing together. That's the exploding teapot, the aforementioned. <laughs> Can people, is this on Netflix or anything like this? Can yeah, it is. I think it's on, it's on one of uh, the streaming channels. Streaming channels, <laughs> yeah. Well, what else have we got there? Um, trailer of your film and then the images for the new show. Okay. Um, so I could show, there's a, the film that I made, Trespass Against Us, um, Tom came and did the music for that, so... Oh, OK, there's a nice link so, there. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a... Um, the kind of dynamic changed a little, and, and it's a different thing making a score for a film than yeah. making an album, so... But he did an amazing job, so we could... kind of... We could watch this. Might be worth switching those lights off. Here's the truth. You pass it down from father to son, well, father, son, grandson. <laughs> That's it! That's it, boy! Me, I've never been arrested. Bloody act, Chaddle, three times. I've never been charged. Darling. Tens each. Please listen. Oh! oh. Tom didn't, Chemical Brothers didn't do this song. <laughs> Did you go on work? You never had to own work. 
I never went to school. Yeah, you look, you know it. Your dad's a legend, Toy Sands. <laughs> you did say we weren't living with your dad forever, Chad. We've got potentials. Thing is, Chad, we can't be having your old man and his old luck pitching up. We're a shell community. No troubles, and I want to keep it that way. So all I want too. I've got a job for you tonight, ain't all right? Can't live like this no more. Can't do it. I've had enough. It's all right, Cal. We're all getting over here now. This is the devil's brothers. Yeah, yeah. But it was, a, it was an interesting process because he was giving me these amazing songs that were that were kind of Chemical Brothers songs, and it was like, oh, this isn't quite... We need to find a different... Um, uh, something different for this. So we re-recorded it using classical instrumentation. OK. I love you so much. I'm getting away from you, Carl. Who you are, boy. I'm just trying to look after my family. I'm your family.